What makes the Champions League semifinals so much more exciting than the Champions League final? What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Quick Questions on Box to Box. Uh, today, we're talking about what makes the Champions League semifinals so much more exciting than the Champions League final. Uh, the biggest difference here being that the Champions League semifinals are held over two legs um, in two weeks, with the aggregate score being the differentiator. Um, this is different than the Champions League final, which is just a one-off game. Um, so, what... We all are in agreement that the semifinals are more exciting, uh, but with a recent proposal that UEFA has put out to turn the semifinals into um, one-off games as well, this makes us consider why this event being held over two legs is so much more exciting. I think it's, like, obviously it's over two legs and more, more goals are going to be scored over two legs, but it, it seems like both legs are much more exciting than the single game, the single final. I think that has to get go just like the mindset going into a final. If a team has a slight disadvantage, they are much more likely to kind of sit back and try to get to extra time um, because over one leg, it's much more likely um, a draw will occur than over two legs. Um, I think it's much more... Um, it's easier to get to that point. You see that in, um, we saw that in the European final, um, the Euro final over the summer. Um, we saw that in the um, AFCON final. Um, it's just like teams that uh, aren't performing at, as well during the game kind of just hunker down and hope for the best um, at the, um, in penalties. Um, as far as semifinals go, there's just like, Sometimes there's funky teams in there. We, we have Villa, Villarreal um, still hanging in there. And it just like storylines are still occurring. And it just like it, we, it still feels like we're in full swing. We're still in the heart of the Champions League. Um, and there's not a lot of kind of media hype around the semifinals compared to the finals. So when a crazy game does occur, um, it's almost just like a surprise. It's like, oh, oh, this is this is great. This is incredible. Um, while there's always these really high hopes for the final, um, that kind of pretty much always disappoint you because it's not as exciting. Yeah, Tom, I agree with what you're saying, and I think not only does it limit the uh, amount of like sitting back or parking the bus that a team can do being held over two legs, uh, but it also forces the dominant team or whoever is kind of playing well to keep pushing for goals um, because all those teams know that um, the next leg they could have an off day. They might not be playing as well. So it forces them to go for more goals um, and to really kind of get a lead going because they know the game is only half over once that first leg um, is done. So I think that's something that is also interesting is that the you know attacking team also has to attack and attack and attack. Um, I think the two-legged format sets up for these crazy upsets that can occur. I think some of the best Champions League moments have been during a second leg when a team has overcome a crazy deficit. We saw that with Liverpool three years ago. Uh, we saw that with Tottenham the day later, uh, come, overcoming crazy deficits. And then obviously in 2017, we saw Barcelona with one of the craziest comebacks of all time uh, in La, La Remontanda. So, I think those are like, that's what makes the Champions League the best, um, in my opinion, one of the best football competitions in the world. Um, and that's why I think they have to keep that two-legged format um, for as long as they can um, and everything but the final. I mean, I agree with everything you guys said. I feel like, um, I mean, obviously two games, more goals, like Tommy said, um, more minutes and just more events can happen. And I, the way I think about it, and this might not make any sense, but um, I think when teams are playing in the semifinal, their goal is to get to the final, right? And how do you get to the final? You want to score goals. There has to be action. Like you guys, you're you're playing with so much energy. And on the opposite side, once you're in the final, I think a lot of times we see players like, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to lose the final versus 
the mindset of I want to get to the final that a lot of teams have in the semi, which is why a lot of times in finals, not just in the Champions League, but in World Cups or other competitions, we have low scoring finals because a lot of times you don't want to make a mistake or you don't want to give up a goal really early. Um, some of the times that stick out to me, obviously, is the Bayern 1-0 win against PSG after throughout the group stage and throughout the knockout stages, they were scoring a ton of goals. Or when Germany won in the, the World Cup in 2014, they had scored seven past Brazil, but that game almost went to pens and it was only a 1-0 win in the final. Um, so I'm sure there's a ton out there. Those are just the ones that come top of mind to me. Um, but I think it's a completely different mindset that a lot of the players have when they're playing in the final versus in the semifinal trying to get to the final. Would you guys prefer if the final was held over two legs? Um, obviously, the CONCACAF Champions League final is happening tonight, um, and that is an event that is held over two legs. Yeah, I'm going to check out the, the CONCACAF final to see see what the, the energy is like in the first leg. Um and it's, it is weird because, like, most uh, tournaments end in a single game um, that, like, the, the Super Bowl, Champions League final, it's, like, a big event. Mm -hmm. um, so to spread that across multiple weeks um, seems um, anticlimactic, anticlimactic um, and presents the opportunity of a blowout in the first leg that makes the, the final leg even more of a um, kind of an afterthought uh, instead of a grand finale. But <clears throat> as we were saying, a two-legged, um, over two legs, it's a lot more exciting. Um, there's opportunity for a lot more exciting games. So honestly, I would, I'm gonna watch this CONCACAF, but if that's in the Champions League, that could be, um, that could create some crazy games, crazy moments like we see in the in the semifinals. Yeah, Harry, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I'm just thinking about if I had a ticket and I'm telling someone I'm going to the final, Champions League final, they're like, oh, which one? <laughs> like, first leg yeah. or the second leg? Like, that would just be, like, weird. Um, but, I mean, it is odd to a certain extent that it's a single elimination match versus, you know, the semis, quarters, round of 16. It's all two legs. Um but I agree with Thomas. I mean, it, it does feel weird. I don't know. I would have to think about it. And I'll watch the games tonight too and just see what the energy is like. But I do like it being a single game at the end and really anything can happen in a single game. Yeah, I agree. It seems more like a culmination of the entire Champions League season to um, come into a pinnacle of one game. Um, so I think at least I prefer it that way. Um, I do agree, though, it does make most of those Champions League finals not as exciting as the semifinals um, or the rest of the knockout stages. Um, that being said, I still do like the pressure it puts on the game uh, because there isn't a second chance. Um, it is you have to perform now and here uh, if you want this title. So I do think that is an important factor um, that if you want to be the champion, you have to play like it here and now, which I think is uh, also very exciting.